It's one of the most famous places on the planet. And one of the most secret. Millions know of its existence, but few know its real purpose. Startled observers tell strange tales of bizarre lights shooting across the night sky. Frightening noises erupting from beyond the sound barrier. And even encounters with life forms from beyond the Earth's grasp. From deep within its borders, the government denies this place even exists. But now, a determined team of expert investigators is hell-bent on finding out the truth. What are they hiding? Who are they protecting? And how far are they willing to go to conceal the secrets of Area 51? The thing that makes it interesting is they deny that it's there. Area 51 is unlike any other U.S. military base. Located deep in the Nevada desert, this top-secret facility is surrounded by a wall of rugged, unforgiving mountains. Protected by an impenetrable ring of security that keeps the base beyond the reach of intruders. And, critics charge, all government oversight. Reports of strange advanced aircraft suggest they may be testing anti-gravity propulsion, a revolutionary aviation system once reserved for science fiction. Chuck Clark may be the world's foremost authority on Area 51. As a professional astronomer and aviation hobbyist, he's always had a fascination with the base, which the U.S. military claims is simply an aircraft test site. In the remote Nevada desert, the tiny town of Rachel is the closest most people get to the high security base called Area 51. It trades on wild claims of UFOs, but many think the government encourages alien theorists to propagate myths about Area 51 in order to discredit legitimate watchdogs. Clark makes this his home base for watching and documenting any and all activity that comes from the base. Today, he's meeting with the team of experts he's assembled to spend 24 hours using any legal means for the most intensive in-the-field investigation ever launched into the true nature of this legendary base. Their mission, to launch a 24-hour, round-the-clock, up-close investigation of Area 51 and discover what the government is hiding inside the walls of the world's most top secret military base. This is Area 51, guys. This is a satellite image of the base. It sort of gives us an overall view of what's out there. Each man brings with him a unique base of knowledge and skills. Guy Norris is an award-winning military aviation reporter. He's been studying top-secret airplanes and air bases his whole career. I think the, the interesting thing is from an FAA chart, as you can see, there's absolutely no indication whatsoever of, of any runways at all on the map within that restricted area. So obviously on the map itself, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, there is no runway here, although quite obviously the, the reality is, is very different. Military communication specialist Bob Groves has been studying the base's radio system. There are several hundred frequencies active out here. I brought a scanner out, going to do some listening and see if, if these are really as active as they seem to be. Private detective Mike Johnson has already been on the case. The security measures are far more than just the remoteness and, and it's being so desolate and out in the middle of nowhere. And he knows that in any well high security outside, military base, security guards are well armed. And at Area 51, they are ready to use deadly force if anyone breaches the perimeter. To really observe the working of the base, they must split into two teams. All right. Team 1, Electronic Surveillance. Mike and Bob will circle the base's perimeter, checking out the elaborate security system up close. They'll try to watch the people who will be watching them, and using radio scanners, they will go beyond the barbed wire and guardhouses to eavesdrop on Area 51. Team number 2, Visual Surveillance. Chuck will lead Guy to the top of Tikaboo Mountain. It's the only vantage point of the base that hasn't been taken over by the military. 
Chuck will aim his astronomical telescope not at the stars, but at Area 51. For Chuck, this trip is the most important of dozens he's made to photograph Area 51 and its operations. Ten years ago, Chuck retired to tiny Rachel, Nevada, so he could get a closer look at the military's latest airplanes. But the more Chuck peered beyond the walls of Area 51, the more he saw that the base was operating according to its own rules, under separate command, out of view, and above the law. Chuck discovered just how far Area 51 security reaches. One day, Chuck was hiking in the desert when he stumbled on what he thought was debris from a crashed airplane. I bent over to, you know, pick it up, pull it out of the, the sand to see what it was, and I saw the antenna sticking out of the ground. You know, so I cleaned it off. It was a transmitter that had a lead going off to a smaller plastic box that was a sensor. Chuck has uncovered a motion detector not along Area 51's secure buffer zone, but miles away from the perimeter of the secret base and on public land. To Chuck, the sensors are the latest in a series of covert moves designed to expand Area 51's ability to carefully monitor the movements of innocent civilians. It's a little overkill in my opinion. They have a uh, about a 25 mile buffer zone out here and it's all terrain like this. It gets rougher as you go. Why they have to put stuff outside the line, it really it escapes me. Uh, I, I found them uh, over in the, the next valley as far as uh, uh, eight miles outside the line and a mile from uh, Highway 375. Determined to expose the military scheme, Chuck enlists the help of award-winning investigative journalist George Knapp. It took us about half an hour to find the first sensor. Five minutes after that, we found the second one. So there's your transmitter right there. And we'll come around here. And right here will be the time delay unit. And you'll see it's clearly marked U.S. government property. In all, the two men discover over a dozen sensors, all set up to transmit information back to Area 51. Retired astronomer and desert rat Chuck Clark keeps an eye on the top secret base known as Area 51. When George Knapp's story hits the air, Chuck is on the move. Chuck has discovered a way to breach the barbed wire and penetrate the ring of security to get inside Area 51 without getting arrested. But it means he has to travel 500 miles to Denver, Colorado. Inside this nondescript building is advanced technology originally developed by the military that runs Area 51. Now Chuck can turn the tables and get an insider's view of the secret base. Space Imaging is a company that owns and operates Iconis, the world's first commercial high-resolution satellite. Iconis circles the Earth every 98 minutes, beaming back aerial images so precise, it can even pick out the building that funds Area 51, the U.S. Capitol. So Chuck, what's your interest in Area 51? I moved out there about 10 years ago, and whenever I wasn't photographing the stars and the heavens, I pointed my big lenses at the base. Ooh, I'm sure they love that. Oh, they loved it. <laughs> Using the Icona's aerial photos, the team at Space Imaging is able to assemble an accurate 3D model of Area 51. The U.S. government may not like Chuck, but they can't stop Space Imaging from giving him his first real peek inside the ultra-secret base. Oh, boy. <laughs> This is Area 51, uh, built with our Iconis imagery, and then uh, we're able to fly through with this software. That's fantastic. I have photographs uh, that I've taken showing the fronts of these, but I've never seen this building. And I did notice you know, some sand on the runway, so I wasn't sure if there hadn't been something that had landed there recently, or maybe the aircraft began landing right about here. Maybe that dust is just painted on for a deception, too. Mm -hmm. I, you know, these, these are, you know, some nefarious people that are running this place, and they might think of something like that. Yeah. Is this public information? I'm sort of, you know, little brother watching big brother. You watch mundane things long enough, and you figure stuff out. 
the security as tight as all the rumors I've heard and what I've seen on TV? Well, it's probably tighter. The security has sensors that are set up miles outside the perimeter, and, mm -hmm. and so they're out there watching you long before you get anywhere near the line. Wow. I'm not going to disappear after this show. <laughs> Probably, but... Uh... <laughs> In Denver, Chuck's mission is accomplished. He quickly hits the road again, determined to share his findings with the rest of his team. But while Chuck was getting his glimpse inside Area 51, the federal government was already striking back, as he's about to learn the hard way. I got a call from a friend of mine with the FBI who said, what the hell are you doing up at Area 51? Something heavy was going to come down real soon. Something bad for Chuck. 